Bruce McConnell with Locomotive Systems Training. Today we're going to continue our series of videos regarding the Federal Railroad Administration Locomotive Inspection Part 1 LSTV-015. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to talk about. Uh, so it says right here, where do I start inspecting at? Well, again, it's going to be a personal choice. Well, that is the question. Where do I start inspecting at? It becomes a personal choice. Some people start inspecting in the cab of the locomotive, others start at ground level. Some start at the front and some start at the rear of the locomotive. Some start inspecting on the left while others start on the right of the locomotive. Others start on top of the locomotive while others start underneath the locomotive. The bottom line, and here it is, it doesn't matter where you start as long as you start each inspection at the same location. This way you are sure that you will not missing, miss any portion of the locomotive. The develop a routine that works best for you be consistent. If you like to start underneath the locomotive, you start there every time. If you like it on top, left, right, cab. Me personally, I always start in the cab, but that's just me. There's no wrong way of doing this, but whichever way you decide to do it, stick with that process. That way you're assured not to miss anything when you inspect the locomotive. So it says confused by too many choices? Absolutely. Just pick one that works for you and then go from there. All right, on this slide here, we're going to talk about the letter F. Well, if we remember from the very first video, we talked about the letter F. And in the United States, the letter F denotes the front of the locomotive. If you're sitting in the cab of the locomotive and you're facing out, you're facing that letter, letter F, your, fa your front is the front of the locomotive, your left is the left of the locomotive, your right is the right of the locomotive, and your rear is the rear of the locomotive. Okay? That's how that works. And then also traction motor numbering. Uh, number one traction motors are in, by the closest to the letter F. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? If we have it on the short hood as it is here. Okay? Which we'll talk about here. All right. The letter F designates the front of the locomotive. All orientation of the locomotive begins with this designation. When you are standing in the cab of the locomotive looking out the front window, your left is on the left and your right is on the right, which we said earlier. Your front is facing the front of the locomotive and to the rear view is the rear of the locomotive. Also, mechanical and electrical components are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. from the front of the locomotive. Note, on some locomotives, the letter F is located on the long hood end, not the short hood end. When this occurs, left and right change as well as front to back, and numbering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is also changed. So, that little designation there uh, is very powerful as far as a landmark. But again, we're referring back to the FRA rule. It must be, you know, wherever that letter F is, this designates the front. And the, say, the rule of that, of the regulation, is it must be legible. Cannot be damaged, has to be readable. Okay? That is the letter F. Okay? All right. Front of the locomotive. The purpose of the front of the locomotive is to contain the horn on certain locomotives. Locomotive number boards. That would be these guys located right here. Uh, headlights. Okay? They would be right here on some of them. Some are right there. The headlights for there. Uh, uh, nose compartments, which is this area right in here. Front cab door over here. Uh, all front windows, which would be on the door, the two center windows, and also the engineer's window. Uh, front cab door, all front windows. Front walkway platform, which is right across here. Um, front handrails and stanchions, which are right here. Okay. That allows the operators or the, or the mechanical department to safely walk on the locomotive and not, and, and have something to, to uh, delineate the pathway without having to fall off. The, the, the handrail will protect them from that. Gives them a barrier. Uh, battery boxes, which are located on the uh, right and left side of the locomotive. Front sand, front sand compartment, which is right inside the nose compartment of the locomotive. Ditch lights, which are these two guys right here that literally light up the right of way for the locomotive as it's moving down the track. Um, MU electrical jumper, jumper cable, which would be located right in this area here. That's where it would connect. And then if it weren't connected, the cable could also come here and go to this uh, can receptacle. Uh, uncoupling levers, which is these guys right here, these black levers. Uh, again, uh, they would use to open, open, not close, but open the, uh, the knuckle. On the, on the coupler. The coupler, MU air hoses, and the plow, which is this whole area right here. We're going to see the individual FRA rules for each of these applicable, com applicable rules. Okay, so 
Here we go. It's defects, the individual components for applicable defects. So here we go. Let's take a look at this. All right. The purpose of the front wind sheet. Now the wind sheet is this whole flat area right here. The purpose of the front wind sheet is to contain all the components located below the front walkway platform. Note. The windsheet is a flat vertical area behind the plow. Now, depending on the type of locomotive we have here, some of those windsheets are like only three quarters of an inch thick, which is still pretty darn thick. But on the larger, uh, more robust locomotives, that windsheet then goes to an inch and a half thick. So quite a bit of difference as far as the thickness of that windsheet. But anyway, the windsheet is the end of the platform. It's the end of the frame. That's where all the components will actually tie onto the very back or the very front of this locomotive. So there's a lot, it's a busy place, a lot of things are happening, a lot of defects can occur here, and having working knowledge of what is acceptable and what's not in this area is crucial to a proper inspection of this locomotive. All right, so, and you're gonna hear this a lot, so we're gonna start with it now, so you're just gonna have to get used to it. Defects, loose or missing fasteners. A loose or missing fastener is any bolt, nut, pin, uh, screw, any type of fastener whatsoever that attaches components to this windsheet or this plow. Okay? It could be a hand, hand grab iron. It could be a bolted hand grab iron. It could be a riveted hand grab iron or anything else along here. Okay? Any physical damage. A lot of times the locomotives will go over some very uneven track, if you will. And a lot of times you'll see damage on the bottom edge of, this, of the uh, snow plow right here uh, on both sides or, or even on just on one side. Uh, minimum clearance to the top of the rail, minimum is three, maximum is six to the top of the rail. So where the top of the rail is, you measure up the minimum is three inches, the maximum is six. Anything in that three to six inch range, you're good to go. Anything less than three inches, that's an FRA defect. Anything greater than six is a FRA reportable defect. There is, there is uh, some locomotives that we use in switching or service, or what they call hump yard service, where they're allowed to be, I think it's up to maximum up to eight inches, but then it has to be stenciled on the plow that that locomotive has that, has that locomotive waiver. So, all right, so that's what we have for the front windsheet. Let's move along. Handbrake, okay. Essentially the purpose of the handbrake is to prevent the locomotive from moving when the air brakes are not applied, okay? It's a handbrake, it's a parking brake. It's used to hold a locomotive in, in a position when the air brakes aren't on or applied or there's no air in the locomotive. It's a mechanical action created here that will actually apply the brake shoe singular or brake shoes plural to a wheel to make sure that locomotive does not move. So here's all the FRA rules. I'm not going to read each one out, out loud. You can see them right here and also you can refer to the uh, uh, website which I'm going to give you here at the end to go to to look these up. So we've done all that work for you. So let's take a look. Defects, loose or missing fasteners. These big nuts and bolts here can become loose. Okay, when that becomes loose, that's the actual anchor point of that handbrake mechanism to the locomotive that goes down and finally goes to the wheels and actually makes contact with the brake shoes against the wheel. Okay, no loose or missing fasteners. The cover bolts quite often come loose. Okay, Though that would become a federal defect. Uh, the handbrake cover loose and or missing. Yeah, a lot of times these covers are loose or once in a while you see one missing. That becomes a federal defect. The handbrake handle does not ratchet properly. It skips. You grab hold of this long handle right here and you grab hold of it and you move it up and you actually hear a ratcheting effect of that lever as the chain is drawn up and the clearance uh, as the handbrake operates, this chain that goes, that's wound around a gear here, that goes all the way down, all the way down, literally to the wheel and the brake shoe. So as I'm ratcheting this lever, I'm actually moving that chain, and that excess chain now is actually going into this covered area. So a loose or missing cover definitely is a defect. Uh, that handle ratchet, if it, if it skips, if it doesn't ratchet at all, that's a federal defect. The handbrake will not fully apply or apply at all. You're moving the handle, you're getting no action, that becomes a federal defect. Um, the handbrake does not release fully or does not release at all when the release lever is pulled. So you, you, what you do is you take this handle, the, uh, the, uh, air, air brake, the handbrake handle, and you fully apply the brake. Then you, and if it's good and tight, you let go of this handle and you grab a hold of this release lever and you pull on it. Now if that lever, the brakes do not release all the way, that's a defect. If the brakes do not release at all when that release lever is pulled, 
that's a defect. Okay, from the, where the brake, when the brake levers all connect down to the brake shoe, all of this has to work in unison. If the brakes don't apply fully, if they don't release fully, that becomes a federal defect. Uh, let's see. The handbrake changed more and more than 30% of its cross-sectional area, which is a lot. These are some pretty good-sized diameter chain lengths, but you have to look wherever that chain meets the contacts of pulley, or if it contacts a what we call a pulley or a shiv down through the, the locomotive frame, down over to the handbrake lever, you got to look at all those chains and make sure they're not worn. And for one more than 30%, that's a federal defect. The handbrake chain stop and or rubber grommet missing. Right here when this lever is pulled and that, that spring pulls that handbrake chain all the way back, there will be a, a rubber grommet, just a piece of round rubber, about a half inch thick and about two, three inches long that fits at the very end of the chain stop. And what it does, it acts like a shock absorber. So that you pull on that lever and that, that, uh, that rubber stop or rubber grommet hits it, it creates a kind of a cushioning effect, so it's not so abrupt. But that grommet is either, either worn or, or damaged or downright missing, that becomes a federal defect. The handbrake twi chain is twisted. The handbrake chain cannot be twisted because if it does, as it goes up through the pulley mechanism here, it will bind and jam the chain up. That becomes a defect. A handbrake pulley frozen uh, or it will not turn. So as you're ratcheting that, you need uh, somebody to either you yourself look at these pulleys to make sure that as the chain goes around it, the pulley is rotating with it. If the pulley does not rotate, that becomes a defect because it's not frozen. The handbrake return spring is sprung or missing, uh, causing a handbrake chain to lay on the traction motor. That's a huge FRA defect. Wherever that chain is attached underneath from the frame to, to one of the handbrake chain links, when, that, that, when that, chain, that release lever is pulled all the way, that handbrake chain cannot be laying on the traction motor, cannot be laying on the wheel, cannot be laying on anything. It has to be fully supported. It has to be just surrounded by air, literally. It can't be laying on anything, okay? Uh, the handbrake inspection date expired on the blue card, past 368 days. So a, mo a lot of railroads, what they'll do is they'll actually put the date of the last inspection and maintenance, like this one was done March 21st of uh, 2014. They also will have that date signed on the back of the blue card. That's, so if it isn't, that becomes a defect. All right, let's go to the next one. Ah, okay, here we are. Um, just what we've gone through today, I want you to go back and I want you to go to this website. It's www.fra.dot.gov. Let me repeat that again. It's www.fra.dot.gov. It's not dot dot. Make sure you do that right. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I do want you to go to our website. It's lst-ca.com. Once again, lst-ca.com. Give us your comments. Give us a call. Tell me what you like. What what more you like us to do regarding these videos, and we'll go from there. Thank you, and have a safe day.